This is the pre-lab video for enthalpy neutralization of the reaction between HCl and NaOH uh, for Chem 113 lab between uh, the sections uh, shared by Dr. Mattel and Dr. Weatherman. And so in this lab you really have two parts. This is a calorimetry lab, so we're going to determine the calorimeter constant, uh, which actually require you to do some work on your own because you're going to need to develop this on your own. And then also we're going to then, after we do that, we'll use that to determine the enthalpy of neutralization of a reaction between HCl and NaOH. Now the calorimeter, and we say it's calorimetry, really a calorimeter sounds like a fancy thing. It's just an insulated device. In our case, it'll be just a, a thermos, a Dewar flask, also it looks just like a thermos. Uh, and the idea is that the calorimeter insulates, uh, keeps the heat flow um, minimal between what's going between the system and the surroundings. And so we know with the conservation of, of heat here that, in, or in the, this case, that the overall the, the, the transfer of heat between the system and the surroundings has to be equal to zero. So if you can limit the gain, uh, well, let's say we have something heating up in the system, if we can limit the amount of that heat going off into the surroundings, then that allows us to rule out that part of the uh, equation allows us to just focus on the heat that's being evolved in the system and allows us to do the types of reactions. So typically calorimeters can range from anything from really fancy insulated uh, metal devices to uh, a coffee cup. Um, the lab manual actually usually talks about a coffee cup. We actually have, since you go to a much more expensive school, uh, we actually can afford nicer calorimeters and so we have uh, Dewar flasks which are essentially just thermos glass. They're sealed, uh, vacuum sealed glass interiors uh, with a metal wrap. And so what will happen then is if we can do that, we can keep, the, it can be a calorimeter that we'll call adiabatic. And what we mean there is that the transfer to the surroundings is essentially zero. So if we consider the surroundings then to be, uh, the system to be then the things that are reacting in the calorimeter, as well as sort of the, the things that are touching the reactants, right? So the, the walls of the calorimeter, we can make the surroundings everything else. And so the nice thing about these calorimeters that we have, and they're pretty good, is that there's no heat flow between the system and the surroundings. Now the manual uh, is really designed for someone using a coffee cup, something where you are gonna spend some more, you're gonna lose some more heat. Um, and so it's a little bit more complicated than what ours is in terms of the calculations you have to do. Ours are a little bit a little bit simpler. So, so this will be our basic setup. We'll have a calorimeter, we'll have a thermometer, uh, and then you'll have your liquids uh, in the middle. So the first question you have to ask though is what happens to the calorimeter in this case? The calorimeter does have edges and, and if you were to feel the inside of the glass after you put hot water in it, um, that glass will be warmer. So there is going to be some absorbance of the heat to heat up the inside of the calorimeter. Now, we can still consider that glass to be part of the system. So then ultimately we know that we have then the heat, if we mixed a hot and a cold liquid together, which is what you're going to do here to determine the calorimeter constant, you've really got three components. You've got the heat that's going to be given up by the hot water, plus the heat that's going to be gained by the cold water, and we can calculate those, those heat values using the mass of each water times the specific heat of water, times the change in temperature. So we can know that, okay, and if we had a perfect system where no heat was being lost in the calorimeter, those numbers would have to be equal. But the reality is the sum of that heat is going to be absorbed in the calorimeter. So we have to also then have another term where we take into consideration the heat absorbed, uh, most of the time it'll be absorbed because if we add hot water to a room temperature calorimeter, so that the heat of the calorimeter then can be expressed in terms of some sort of calorimeter constant, which we're going to determine experimentally, times then the change in temperature there. So, um, so what you're going to do first then is you're going to try to calculate the calorimeter constant. And um, every calorimeter has a constant, um, you know, and, and, and so um, you should be able to measure that. Now this is a part where you know, we'll give you the general idea. The general idea is you're going to have hot water that's about 60 degrees. You're going to have cool water. You can probably get it from the tap. It doesn't really matter. And you're going to, um, or you can get deionized. It doesn't matter. And you're going to put those, you're going to, then you're going to, you're going to have somehow have to mix those two in the calorimeter. So you need to design a procedure that will allow you to get a reproducible value for the calorimeter constant. So we're going to let you figure this out. Um, the lab manual can give you some hints. Um, this idea of using graphical representation 
Um, really, our calorimeters are so good that that's not something you have to do. So you can kind of, you don't have to necessarily graph it out. But what we are going to ask you to do is you have to repeat that a number of times. So this, it's important to get this number really nailed down. So you need at least three values between uh, plus or 10 uh, joules per Kelvin. That will be the unit for the calorimeter constant. Um, if you don't, then you can do a couple more. And the idea is that eventually, you know, you, you can get rid of one of your outliers, hopefully. So you may have to repeat this a couple times. It's a really simple experiment once you design it. Um, and you can figure that out uh, with the help of the lab manual, with the help of your partner. Um, you can design that procedure. So you will come out of that with a calorimeter constant. After that then, um, now so some hints here is that one of all, I would use larger quantities. Um, it's easier to get precise data that way. Um, you can mix, mixing the two solutions, there's going to be a little while that it takes to mix and a little while for it to reach thermal equilibrium for the calorimeter. And so, um, you know, so the question is, so if you swirl it, make sure you don't spill it. Uh, and then it may take a couple minutes to reach that thermal equilibrium at the first point, okay? So then... What you get out of that, then, is a calorimeter constant. And so from that calorimeter constant, then, um, you're going to then use that to determine the enthalpy of neutralization of a reaction. So we'll just do, uh, you know, if you add acid and base, um, you've done this before, sodium hydroxide and HCl, it's going to warm up. So the question is how much heat is produced. So that's an exothermic reaction. And so the question is, you know, that, so that reaction is going to heat up the water, it's going to heat up the product, in this case, uh, as well, and it's also going to heat up the calorimeter. So your idea then, is your goal, is to determine the amount of heat released per mole of product formed. Okay, now the hard part is trying to figure out, well, what's my, how much product do I have? Uh, well, um, you know, you can remember conservation of mass, so you should be able to calculate how many moles you're producing. Um, you may have to figure out what your limiting reagent is. Um, and then you can figure out the concentration of those. Because to get the specific heat, so if you look at this equation then, you've really got a couple components, right? You've got the HCl. You'll be able to figure out how many moles or millimoles of each of those you'll have, and then we'll give you the concentration on the bottle. And you can convert that with a density calculation to figure out the mass of both, because you figure when you combine them, the mass will produce NaCl and a, and a mole of H2O, or an e uh, equal molar amount of H2O, so you can figure out how much sodium chloride you have. That will allow you then to determine what the um, heat change will be in that final product, the specific heat. Okay, and to do that, you're going to need a couple tables. And one of them will be the heat capacity of various concentrations of sodium chloride. Okay, so you'll be able to calculate your concentration of sodium chloride based on your, uh, the number of moles and the number of milliliters of solution you're using. Um, and then you'll be able to get the mass of the sodium chloride from that calculation. Okay, so that's really important. And so we have a couple tables. We'll put these on Moodle as well. So there's, for aqueous sodium hydroxide, that density is not one. So we can take this out to a number of significant figures, and I want you to uh, in this lab. So we've got that, the density of the NaOH. We've got the density of the HCl. And then finally, we have the heat capacity of the various uh, aqueous NaCl solutions. Now, if your number... If your molarity doesn't fall exactly on this, you should be able to see, though, kind of extrapolate what that number should be. Okay, and so you should be able to use that, those properties then, with the calorimeter constant, to then be able to deduce how many, um, how many of these things, uh, how many of the, um, how much heat is produced by the reaction. You can get it per mole of the reactants happening. Okay, we're not going to do any of the H2SO4 or, or phosphoric acid. That gets a little bit more complicated because they're um, uh, polyprotic. But um, this should be uh, fairly easy to take care of. Now, in terms of uh, disposal, um, sodium chloride obviously can go down the, down the sink. Even if you had any excess HCl or sodium hydroxide, those can also go down the sink. So everything can be thrown away with no problem.